Dr. Tom Rosell live right now, 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. I am live in studio. 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you on any subject you have in mind. Perhaps you've had a problem, you've tried, you've applied. Well, this is your opportunity to find out how to actually do something about it without drugs, without surgery, without treating the symptom process, and somebody having to tell you, you know what, you got to learn to live with it. 888-630-9625. In studio, amazingly in studio, after... An incredible, fantastic, superb, unbelievable Ageless Health seminar yesterday, the 17th. What a day. It was amazing. We went from very early to very late. Those of you who attended know how fantastic and how powerful the day was. We enjoyed it. We hope that you did as well. In studio with me, Dr. Harlan Browning, the professor as I called you yesterday. Yeah, that, that was fun. I had a real good time, and uh, I just want to spin into into today. This, this is an you know. I enjoy this event so much. I look forward to it. We're already planning next year's. Last night at dinner, we sat and we did the postmortems, and you know we thought about what we could do better, what we could enhance upon, what we could do, and Ann Abernathy. Oh my God! Fantastic, unbelievable. The motivational aspect was was a key piece to this this year's presentation for sure. You know, human beings like that you you hear about and you wonder. You know, do they really exist? This lady has overcome so many things in her life. And to become a six-time Olympian and then injured with brain injury after the fourth Olympiad and then being put back together by a chiropractor. And, you know, they told her after that that she would, you know, she would always have uh, loss of, of uh, mental capacity and not be able to participate, let alone her life. And she pulled out of that. She was incredible. It was just, you know, she, bring tears to your eyes when you hear her story. But she was powerful. Yeah, she was fantastic. I had the opportunity to sit with her and... Uh, on the side, and some of the stories she was telling me were, were just fascinating. And some of the things she's going to do moving forward, as far as um, some TV shows she's thinking about producing, I know. Are, are fantastic stuff. Yeah, I know that's great. You know, she was telling me that, you know, she's from the Virgin Islands, and she was telling us last night at dinner that she was doing these snippets, like a Paul Harvey snippet, you know, for uh, quite some time, and and you know she did this, and this was the rest of the story, and she had us in stitches. I mean, she she is quite the lady. Very, very fun, more person, yeah. You know, as we go forward, hopefully we'll do more things with her and be able to, you know, uh, really enjoy her company and allow her presence to be significant for our patients and the people that we touch on our going But, boy, we touched a lot of people yesterday. Talked to a lot of folks. And, and you know what? Today's just kind of a continuation. It's part two. I know. This is part two. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Browning is going to be your host on our in-house continuing education program. This Wednesday evening, the 21st of September at 7.30 p.m., Dr. Browning is going to be doing a program on hip and knee pain. And... Those of you who have been, you know, wondering if knee surgery or hip surgery is something that is in your future and you want to be able to figure out how not to have that, if it's difficult getting up out of a, a chair because your hip and your knee hurts or walking up the stairs or walking down the stairs and nobody's giving you any relief and all you're on is steroids and medications and so forth, this is the guy to see. Wednesday evening, 7.30 p.m., you need to call our office, 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff you'd like to register for our in-house continuing education program this Wednesday evening on hip and knee pain. And I think you're going to learn how to get rid of that. So let's talk about hip and knee pain. A little bit, and then we'll go kind of go back and forth with stuff. Well, you know, it's probably one of the most common things that I see in my practice because uh, very often they go together. Um, one thing leads to the next. Um, when I look at hip and knee pain, I, I think about chronicity of the problem. When, when did it start? Was there an injury pattern? And, what, you know, most importantly, what is a person doing for it? A lot of times people are just stalling and, and killing time by treating it with over-the-counter medications or maybe they're putting some ice and some heat on it. Uh, and the sad fact is the process stays in place and continues to degenerate and, and often gets worse over time and, and it becomes more of a permanency there. And many of the medications that doctors write for these types of, they say, well, it's arthritis, you're going to eventually have surgery. They give them the drugs that actually are prophetic. They end up increasing, you know, the, the inflammatory response and the degeneration and so forth. Ultimately, 
you know, guess what? You're going to have surgery. Yeah, and you, and you will, and that's that's a sad fact. It's kind of a vicious cycle. You, um, you know, at one point, one Advil will take care of the pain a couple years later, and then it's to two, to three, to four, and then you go to the the orthopedist, and then he amps it up by giving you Celebrex or you know stronger medications, and eventually, uh, there's not much left in the joint, and you know what? That person doesn't have that many options because they're bone on bone, and and everything is gone because they didn't realize that the problem was that significant, and they let time go by and. Um, they get themselves into a situation that's tough to get out of. You know, it's unfortunate that people don't really understand how bad and deadly these medications are. You talk about things like Celebrex and Vioxx and, and uh, I think it's uh, Bextra. Bextra. Is that back on the market yet? You they, know, they I'm not sure it if, it, if it is. I just I try to keep myself far away from those yeah, things. Yeah, you and me both. Uh, but all of those were deadly. They took Celebrex off because it was 500 milligram tablets and they were given them. And they had an interesting side effect it was called heart failure and uh, Bextra as well. And I know that they ultimately obviously put Celebrex back on at 200 milligrams or 250. Now it's the dosage, but even still, it's the accumulation effect. And uh, Celebrex is an NSAID. It's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, and it causes the joint space to ra- rapidly break down, but it also causes... Uh, mitochondrial failure within the tissue, particularly in the heart. And, you know, it's interesting, tying into what I talked about yesterday at at the, the conference, I touched a lot about uh, inflammation, and I looked at pathways, and it was kind of complicated, but I think I, I slowed it down and, oh, you did it and, bro- and, and broke it down. But for those folks who are listening today that were at the, the conference yesterday, if you pull up that inf- inflammation slide, it specifically shows you on there how the body goes through these stages of changes of 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 cells and and what what's involved and it also shows you how conventionally medicine's trying to treat it by using steroids and, and NSAIDs but then I also had that slide that I think was fantastic that showed you how the natural therapies like white willow boswellia turmeric uh, omega 3s how they fit in so you can see the overlap and you can almost reproduce what you, what your 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 MD is doing by using these natural agents because you can pinpoint exactly on that chart where your problem is you know if our, the attendees just got anything, they should realize that any condition has the capacity to get worse or get better under the right situations. That environment, structural, chemical, emotional, environmental stresses cause the body to break down, cause the joint spaces to be destroyed. And in this situation that we're talking about, that if you reverse that, if you truly stop what you're doing, yes, you can put off things, and we've seen repetitively over the years, whether it's a neck and, or a low back or shoulder, we can see reversal and healing and resolution of many of these conditions. Yeah, and, and you know, sometimes, Tom, what I say to people is we need to take a step back because a lot of folks that I see, and I know you see this too, think that they're going to be able to replace one for one the medication they have with some sort of natural agent and call it a day. That all they're going to come possible. in, not possible. So a lot of times I tell people, you know, your joint problem is in part certainly because of the inflammation, but really it's it's in part because of the instability in the joint and the weakness around it. But a lot of folks don't want to get down and dirty and do the rehabilitation and change the the things that they're doing in their life that are causing the weakness or the instability there to begin with. Yeah, but we're we're in a society that we want somebody to do it to us. Exactly. We want somebody to fix it for us. We don't want to have the responsibility of having to alter that. And, you know, you're going to springboard off of the presentation that you did yesterday, this Wednesday evening. And as I said, uh, this Wednesday evening, the 21st, Dr. Browning is going to be doing a presentation on what we're talking about, hip and knee pain. And if you'd like to figure out how to fix that, call our office, please, at 703-698-7117. Be our guest. I think you're going to learn a whole lot. And, you know, wouldn't it be nice to turn these things around and to fix that knee and to fix that hip? In applied kinesiology, which is our specialty that we practice and we spring everything from, we recognize the relationship between the internal environment and the external environment, meaning the organ systems and the muscles. And muscles control all joints. So you have the thigh muscle called the quadricep and comes over the knee. You have muscle on the outside called the iliotibial band, also the tensor fascia lata, that controls the knee and the hip. You have a sartorius muscle, which is the largest muscle in the body, comes from the front of the hip down to the inside of the knee, and the gracilis and so forth, and back of the leg, and we haven't even gotten back there yet. But the point is, is that every one of these muscles, when we examine a patient, is checked for strength and strength for inhibition or weakness. And what that really means is the muscle's capacity to work. So when you're evaluating a patient, 
because we have that relationship between inside and outside, so when you test the muscle that is uh, strong, we can call it facilitated, or weak, we can call it inhibited, inhibited, then it gives you also not only a mechanical representation, but it also gives you an internal look as well as something may be producing something non-mechanical. Certainly. In... in the ideal world, it would be great if a muscle was weak just because it, we didn't exercise it, but that's furthest from the truth. So if we sift through the layers of why muscles are weak or inhibited, like you, you, you pointed out, usually there's a neurological component. Maybe the nerve that's going to the, to the muscle is compressed or compromised, and that can happen at the level of the spine. Uh, it certainly can happen as that nerve winds its way through other muscles. Um, we can see weakness patterns also maybe because the capacity of the muscle, the metabolic capacity has, has changed over time because maybe the person doesn't eat properly and they don't have the raw materials for the energy production in that muscle and we produce it through something called the mitochondria and I talked a lot about that yesterday. So yes, maybe our diet is sabotaging us. Um, and then as you, you pointed out, maybe the representation of the internal environment of our organs as they're expressed through the muscular system is not stable. So if a person is under a lot of stress, we often will think about that as it, as it relates to maybe the person not being able to sleep. Well, what about if a person's under stress that causes changes in muscles that reflect that stress, like the gracilis muscle, that muscle in the knee, which has a strong relationship to the adrenal gland. So the first thing that the person might notice is not that the fact that they don't sleep well or they're worrying is they might start to develop knee pain despite the fact that they didn't have an injury and nothing necessarily started the process. You know, and they go to their physicians and the physician says, well, you're getting degeneration and it's your age. And, you know, I love when uh, Dr. Sims, Sushil Sims, will look at the patient and say, well, how old is your other knee? You know, so if that was the case, then wouldn't you have both knees breaking down virtually at the same time and having problems? But there's something else. There's another component to it. And when you look at it, which you do in practice, you look at all the pieces that affect that. You look at the, the dietary patterns. You look at the emotional stress patterns. You look at small injury whether it's, you know, from uh, trauma that is evidential or things that may not be evidential. Let's talk about that for a minute. What, you know, what would you may, uh, what might you suspect with a patient when you're looking at microtraumas that, you know, that ultimately over a period of time, in fact, might be a mechanical problem? Well, the, when you add up lots of small traumas over time, the problem with that is maybe that those traumas did not repair themselves um, to the level of the tissue before, meaning that each time we injure ourselves, our immune system should go in, clean up the mess, and lay down new tissue that's almost of the same quality as the original. If that process takes place, then the, the, the knee becomes healthy, the cartilage great, and we don't notice anything. Well, in some cases, because of, of maybe not the ability to heal or the immune system's weakened or we just don't take care of ourselves, as, as time goes by and we accumulate these traumas, we lay down what's called scar tissue. Scar tissue is not as viable or healthy as the original tissue. It doesn't stretch as well. It's highly vested in nerves for pain. Um, it it's, doesn't have great blood supply. So the likelihood that you re-injure that area becomes greater. And guess what? It's a domino effect. We lay down more scar tissue and more scar tissue. So in reality, arthritis is nothing more than scar tissue on bone. We're going to pick that up when we come back. This Wednesday evening, the 21st, Dr. Browning is going to be talking about hip and knee pain. Give our office a call at 703-698-7117. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 630 WMAL. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We are in studio at 888-630-9625. 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you on any subject. Give us a call. We're here live. My guest, Dr. Harlan Browning, the professor. <laughs> That's a new term you know, now. I, I like it. I, I like it. <laughs> you know, when I was on stage introducing you yesterday at the Ageless Health Seminar, it just kind of came out. Yeah, and I think it's probably going to end up sticking. Huh? I think yeah. so, too. It's, you know... I. Finally, after all these years, I finally found a term that I like. You know, it, it, we're going to put it. We're going to put it over the door. We're going to say professor, professor, Doctor Brownie. Okay, I like it. You like that? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I figured you might. Let's go with it. All right. Let's good. This Wednesday <laughs> evening, Doctor Browning is going to be presenting an evening on hip and knee pain. And if you'd like to figure out how to get out of your problem, and you know, every time you step, you hurt. Well. 
this is your opportunity. You might actually find out a way to rectify the problem. Those of you who were with us yesterday at the Ageless Health Seminar found that there's a whole lot of ways to fix a whole lot of things that you may not have thought about. And just because you're genetically predisposed, now you understand that it's the environment that brings out the genetics or suppresses the genetics or makes things worse. Call us, 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. Tell my staff you'd like to attend Dr. Browning's presentation this Wednesday evening, the 21st, on hip and knee pain. I promise you he will be as much fun as he was this yesterday, Saturday, right? Yes, we, we, yes. we had fun. That's... It, it was great. It was amazing. You know, Tom, I want to just bring something up that I think is important when you're talking about people with pain. Um, you need to consider things outside the area of pain. And I think that's the missing piece in medicine today. We compartmentalize um What's going on with an individual? And we assume that if the problem is here, um, or the pain is here, the problem has to be there. The and that's, there. yeah, and that's not the case that's at all. The case. And, uh, w- one of the things that I first consider when I look at anybody's problem is, is I look at the body as a whole. I- is there other signs that, of breaking down? And unfortunately, we don't associate knee pain, for example, with headaches or knee pain with an upset stomach or knee pain with, Anxiety, but you know, very often those things go together. They're all and, if, and if you treat one, you treat them all, and uh, that, that's the way you 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 put together like holistic healthcare. That's that's what it's all about. And it's the integration. It's the, it's the measurement. It's the compliance. It's the the coming together of all those pieces. You know, you talk about headaches, and what does that have to do with knee pain? You talk about you know sluggishness. Well. If you ask a patient, you know, they come in for a history and say, well, have you had any headaches? What's that got to do with my knee pain? Have you had digestive upset? What's that got to do with my knee pain? How are your bowels? What does that have to do with my my knee pain? Well, remember we said a minute ago that every muscle in the body has an organ system that's related to it. Well, the knee, there's a muscle behind the knee called the popliteus muscle, and it relates to gallbladder function. And one of the... Uh, presentations of gallbladder dysfunction, even when there's not a digestive dysfunction problem, is a headache. And it's behind the head, a migraine type of headache that goes to the eye. And next thing you know, you got a patient that's complaining that their knee's swollen or they have problems, you know, extending the knee completely. And most physicians don't get that. They don't understand it because they're compartmentalizing the knee. Oh, your knee's swollen, and then they do something to decrease the swelling of the knee without fixing the why is that. Right, because the end product might be that the fact that there is damage in the knee, but what caused the damage? And if you don't address what's causing the damage, it, it will continue. You can control the fire at, right at the local spot there. You can put water down on it and keep it under control. But if you don't keep on throwing the water on it, in this case, maybe medication or, or whatever you're, the therapy you're trying to use at home, it'll 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 come right back up. And in most ca- cases, the medication that you're using to control the symptomological presentation does nothing to stop the progression of it. It just makes it tolerable. You can live with it while it's breaking down and getting worse. Physician says, well, we'll do this, and when you can't stand the pain anymore, we'll do surgery. But the patient doesn't realize that they have a responsibility to do many other things to stop it, to reverse it, because the, f- the further downstream you go to identify the condition, the more likely it is that, one, you can actually stop the, the, the pain, but you can also can reverse the condition in a real world uh, is there a challenge? Absolutely, there's a challenge. But in an optimal world, can it be done? It can be done. Right. And and I think also to add to this, you need to look at what the person's doing to help themselves. And very often, they're not doing anything to help themselves. They think by resting it, um, it's going to make it better when in reality, or putting a brace on it, that's yeah. even worse. That, there's nothing that upsets me more when I see a person come in who has a knee or an elbow problem and they have a brace on it and they, and they like say, hey, I've got this brace. It works fantastic. I don't have any pain. Well, you know what? You're, you're slowly making the problem worse because you're taking the muscles out of their primary role. I know. I hate to, I hate to put people in braces because now they've got a crutch and it's not good. We've got to take a break for news and some important information. My guest in studio, Dr. Harlan Browning, the professor. We're going to be doing a presentation this Wednesday evening on hip and knee pain. He will be your host. Call our office at 703-698-7117. 
Dr. Tom Roselle Live continues now on 630 WMAL. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. You're listening to Dr. Tom Roselle Live. We are in studio, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-WMAL. Love to talk to you. Whatever subject you have in your mind, we're talking about hip and knee pain, but don't let that stop you from giving us a call. We're here to help you no matter what the condition is, and we're going to do it without drugs, without surgery. I want to remind you that ongoing sponsor of Dr. Tom Rizal Live is Thermography Centers. And many of you who attended Ageless Health yesterday got the opportunity to talk to Dareth Painter and Tammy Liner personally and discuss individual situations and applications. As a matter of fact, Dr. Stephanie Pina in her acupuncture presentation showed pro- uh, progressive uh, pictures of thermographic imaging and how acupuncture actually has a tremendous and profound effect immediately, not days later, but within minutes, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes later. Great stuff. Go online at thermographycenters.com and check it out. There are many uh, opportunities throughout the metropolitan area, but also you can call 703-943-7248 and talk to Dareth and ask her you know, what you can do to uh, include that as part of your ongoing health physical. Let's go to the phones. Janet, how can we help you? Hello, Dr. Roselle. Uh, congratulations on a wonderful program yesterday. Uh, thank and you. To Dr. We- Browning as well. Uh, it was just absolutely an excellent day. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad you were there. Um, and Dr. Roselle, I um, have a brother who used to be a NFL football player. He was an offensive lineman. Um, I believe it was around 1986 that he stopped playing. And now he's experiencing very severe hip pain and is thinking of scheduling surgery um, for December where they pull the hip bone out through, um, I guess, the rear end and sand it off or do whatever and then put it back in place. Um, I don't know the name of it. Are they going to do a hip replacement or are they just going to remodel the knee? Or the knee, the hip, rather. Um, I believe it's remodel. I don't believe that it's a replacement. And um, I have tried to suggest that maybe he consider chiropractic care or something else. And um, I do have him, I asked him to listen to your program. So if you would have any ideas or suggestions that he might try, hopefully he will be able to hear uh, your answer. Okay, well, we can talk about his problem right now. Do you, uh, has the problem been progressive for him, getting uh, worse and worse over time? Yes, I believe so. What has he done about it? Anything? Um, has not he has that he I had any? Has, so he's had no conservative care like acupuncture or anything of that nature. No, I don't believe he's had anything like that. Okay. Does he drink coffee, sodas? Does he have a sweet tooth? Anything along that line? I definitely know about coffee. Um, yes, he does drink coffee. Um, I think the sweets and sodas are minimal, but he probably does have some occasionally. Does he also have a, a lot of loss of motion in the hip, or is it really just a pain component? Well, I think it's probably some kind of loss of motion because he does uh, limp pretty severely. And how long has he been complaining of the, this pain? Do you know? Has he talked to you about this? You know? um, I've known about it for about a year, but I don't know how much longer you know past that it, it's been. Is he is he relatively in good shape, or is he is he overweight? Is he carrying around excess? Well, he was a lineman, and I think he does weigh about three hundred pounds, but um, he does exercise and stay in pretty good shape. I think he's about six uh, six. Okay, so he's a big, he's a very big guy big then. Big boy. Yeah. What, what now? In in the past, has has he has he seen anybody for any kind of therapy or any kind of rehabilitation to the hip, or has he just gone the conventional route and, and taken some medication and and um, you know shots and that type of thing? I'm sorry, I I, I can't answer that. I okay. don't know. All right. Well, what we'll do is we're going to discuss some options and probability because we've we've treated uh, many professional athletes over the years, and and if you've listened, you know that uh, I was the doc for the Washington Mystics for a long time. We treated uh, many of the Redskins, particularly going back to the years when Gibbs was in town the first time. But uh, let's discuss it a little bit, and hopefully your brother's uh, listening, and we'd love to be able to consult with him. Well, that would be wonderful. Okay. So, Dr. Browning, we have a uh, retired offensive lineman, a uh, big guy. And he has hip pain, and we don't know whether or not he has 
uh, bone on bone, but we do know that he's uh, contemplating a surgical remodeling, it sounds like, for the femur head. Uh, and uh, with that, so we'll ca- we can make assumptions. We can make assumptions that there's a lot of inflammatory reaction going right. on, that his weight at this point of his life uh, far exceeds his uh, his capacity for workload, he doesn't need it anymore. So he's and it's probably nowhere near the physical shape and capacity that he was in when he was an elite athlete playing uh, professional ball. And that his dietary patterns, with l- what little we know about, aren't supportive to the healing process and actually will make things worse, causing high levels of inflammatory response. Right. And, you know, if we kind of reverse engineer what what his, his sister described to us, we can go ahead and assume he had lots of trauma to the hip. Absolutely. That's, that's just going to be part of the, of the picture. I, I would go ahead and, and safely assume that there, he's there's some compensation taking place, too, for that hip problem. So he has probably a postural distortion, meaning that he's either leaning away from the hip or towards the hip or forward or backwards or what have you, which actually complicates the destructive aspect of the hip, uh, not necessarily the pain component, but it's certainly you, you're going you're gonna to reposition that hip um, out of its normal area. So that, that doesn't help. I mean, it feels better, but doesn't help the, the big picture. And I think it's safe to assume that we can go ahead and say that there's probably a lot of deconditioning in the muscles that surround it and loss of range of motion. Absolutely. So having said that, we want to kind of put the car in reverse and restore those things. There's a law in neurology called um, Sherrington's Law that says that for every muscle that crosses a joint, it receives the same neurological information as the joint itself, meaning that the nerve that communicates with the joint also communicates with the muscle that crosses the joint. So what does that mean for this gentleman? Well, it means that if the joint integrity is poor, that means that the neurological integrity of the joint has been compromised, which means the muscular component becomes compromised because they're tightly wound in. So the first thing that has to be established is better joint function. He's never going to have a healthy joint of a 21-year-old person. We know that. But he can have better joint function, and which can, means the health of it is much improved. And it can have loss of, of uh, pain patterns. Certainly, that, without that a doubt. should be able to go away, and he should be able to get back to... If there's, if there's not total massive destruction of the joint space itself, that by itself indicates prognostically, from our viewpoint and the work that we do, that there may, there's a great chance for... Uh, reliability, survivability it means that we can predict that he is going to be a whole lot better than what he is right now. Right. And, you know, a lot of times when I, when I talk to my older patients or sometimes, you know, younger about uh, joint replacement, I describe it this way. The prognosis is good if there's still cartilage there because cartilage is like soil. If you want to plant a garden, you have to have soil. I can't plant gar- a garden in my driveway because it's rock. So the sooner you do something about your problem, the easier it is to correct it. And the folks that usually end up having surgery are the folks that have had the problem for 15 or 20 years. It gets progressively worse. They ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. And then basically the joint is so destroyed and flattened out. There's nothing left. There's nothing left. So I guess the take-home message is if your body is telling you something's wrong, Something probably is wrong, and you, know, you need it, to look at it. You look at a joint like this, and we talked about muscles that cross it over and so forth. And just from the little bit that Janet gave us, we're making assumptions, obviously, because we don't have the patient in front of us. But here's, here's my take on it. Now, we talked about the longest muscle in the body called the sartorius muscle. It comes from the front of the hip and comes all the way down inside the inside of the knee. When that muscle weakens or, you know, gets to a place where it's not pulling equally from the front to the back, it's going to allow that hip to have stress posteriorly, and it flares also. Right. And that flaring and that posterior rocking of that hip is going to cause a joint space. Now, why would I make that assumption? The sartorius muscle is an adrenal muscle. It's a fight-flight muscle. She's told us that he drinks coffee. Uh, it's a stimulant. It's an inflammatory agent. He, she told us that he drinks some sodas. How often, how much, who knows. But th- we know those are joint destructive because of the phosphoric acid that's within the soda. Uh, I would lean to guess at that point that his diet's probably not optimal simply because of the fact that he's still carrying the weight that he carried when, uh, when he was playing ball. So with some modifications in the right application of treatment, my guess is that there's a lot that can be done. And Janet, if your brother's listening... Encourage him to uh, to come to Dr. Browning's class this Wednesday evening in our office. We'd love to talk to him 
and you know we'll talk to him privately and see what we can do. Dr. Browning will take him aside and, sure. and chit chat with right. him after the class. And, and one of the, the the biggest problems that I see um, as far as diagnoses is concerned is very often the diagnosis is made off of an X-ray. So if there's degenerative change in the X-ray, or let's say it's a person's back and there's a disc that's bulging, the assumption is made that what you see on the X-ray is what's causing the problem, and very often that's the farthest from the case. We got to remember there's tons of soft tissue around there too. Ligaments, right. tendons, muscles, the bursa, that's the fluid filled sac that separates our, our, our muscles from our bones. Those get easily inflamed. So y- you don't want to sell the farm on the fact that there's arthritis on the film because I can tell you, and I know you, Dr. Rizal, see this every day. We see films uh, that uh, with people with tremendous amount of arthritis in their spine, for example, but yet they don't have that much pain. There's they complain no pain. of stiffness. So you, you can't just lay it all on the line because the x-ray say, says it. you got to make sure that the, the physical examination parallels what, you're, what you're, you're thinking is going on. And if, if you're willing to step up and, and make a difference, and you're going to cover that this Wednesday evening, and the things that can be done, what's possible, what you actually can reverse. The underlying unstable component of this whole thing is the patient's willingness to do what it takes to reverse. We talked about that yesterday. We talked about genetic predispositions and we talked about environmental stimulus of those genetic predispositions or genetic strengths and the environmental suppressions of those genetic strengths. We have to look at the whole package and the beauty of it is is that the body will reverse itself. You just have to put it into a place where it has that opportunity and recognizing what the underlying components are is the first step. We're at triple eight six three zero nine six two five. Let's go to the phones. Margaret, thank you for holding. Margaret, how can we help you? Um, I my I had a bone density test. My doctor said that I am at a risk for fracture. She gave me um, a prescription for actinel. 35 milligrams, but I was wondering if there's something that I could do dietary-wise. I really didn't want to take the medication. Well, obviously, you know, from our point of view, those medications, if you look them up, if you go online, you'll find that it has tremendous amount of side effects. And when you take any of the biophosphonates, what they do is they destroy the bone. They harden it like a dry stick and you actually increase your risk of fracture more so than not taking them. Oh, for heaven's sake. So, but they also have other interesting side effects from cancers and uh, blood problems and so forth. And so that's the, that's the bad news. The good news is that there's much that can be done, but you have to understand the physiology behind it. You have to look at many of the different components, from the levels of vitamin D to the absorption levels of calcium in the body to the different enzymes that are available to rebuild and repair the bone. Uh, Margaret, there's a great deal that can be done. And uh, if we can help you, we'd love to help you. In, you, know, you can call our nutrition department. You can start with Sue or call Dr. Browning and, and make an appointment with him uh, or any of us because that's something that we see every day. But taking uh, bisphosphonate is, uh, in my opinion, one of the uh, least favorable options that you have because of all the unfortunate side effects that go along with it. Margaret, appreciate your phone call. Thank you. If we can be of further help, please give us a call. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Harlan Browning will be your host at our office at the Rizal Center for Healing. We'd love to have you as our guest. Give us a call at 703-698-7117. He's going to be talking about hip and knee pain. If you have either one of them and you'd like to get rid of them, that's your opportunity. 703-698-7117. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 630 WMAL. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. We've been here at 888-630-WMAL taking your phone calls that we love to do every Sunday at 12 noon. My guest in studio, Dr. Harlan Browning, the professor, and he will be your host, your presenter, this Wednesday evening, the 21st, at the Result Center for Healing at 7.30 p.m. He's going to be talking about hip and knee pain. Give us a call at 703-698-7117. And those of you who'd like to visit us online at rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E. Let's go back to the phone. Susan, how can we help you? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, I've been having a lot of hip pain for the last year and recently was diagnosed with a uh, nodule on my parathyroid, 
which uh, may be the culprit causing hypercalcemia. And uh, my endocrinologist didn't mention to me if that could be causing the hip pain, but I see a surgeon tomorrow uh, about removing the nodule. Um, I'm just wondering if you or the other doctor uh, could comment on whether the uh, hypercalcemia could be causing... Well, the hypercalcemia is simply because that the calcium is not being deposited in the bone, so it's going into the bloodstream, which is a dangerous situation for you. And the uh, the hip could be a problem with the hypercalcemia, uh, but there's a lot of other things that you'd have to look at first. Generally, if it was, if it's one hip, uh, then my guess is maybe not. If it's both hips and your, your pelvis generally aches, then the possibility does exist that it could be the hypercalcemia as the, as the calcium is coming out of the bone. Uh, but is it one-sided? It's one-sided. Yeah, I, I would highly doubt that that's the, the cause. But, you know, certainly that, that needs to be addressed because you, over time the density of the bone is going to be affected. Okay. So well, you, you got to look at uh, you have to look at all the pieces. It's going to make it much worse. So you can have hip pain from a, a lot of different uh, causes, and it can be from old injury. It can be from muscle weaknesses, as we've been discussing throughout the program today. It can be from structural imbalance. It can be inflammatory reactions. But the fact that you have the hypercalcemia with the hyperparathyroid problem, then that tells us that it's going to be exacerbated by that so you you know you can you have to treat both obviously you're going to be looking at removing the nodule and that should you know totally rectify the problem without any any but the whole underlying situation is where did the nodule come from so right. if we can be of help uh susan please let us know and if you'd like to talk to us further please let us know you can okay. you can get hold of us and, and if you know you're living in chantilly so give us a call and uh, attend the program on uh, wednesday evening and you can talk to dr browning one-on-one okay thank you so much thanks for your phone call appreciate okay. it you know the problem is this show goes way too fast, fast and we are done and we're out of time and unfortunately we have to say goodbye until next week at 12 o'clock we will be back next sunday this is dr tom Roselle and your host this wednesday evening dr harlan browning we'll see you next week bye my friends health is a do-it-yourself program that's reality and the title of my new book this is dr tom Roselle. Health is a do-it-yourself program is a most understandable introduction to natural health care. My book will take you step-by-step step through why the body breaks down and gets sick, but also how it repairs itself. You will finally understand the often confusing world of natural care. Order it today by going to Amazon.com or from our website, RoselleCare.com. That's RoselleCare.com. Did you know that routine mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest x-ray? Now consider a simple, non-invasive, and totally safe medical procedure approved by the FDA since 1982 that can detect breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect the initial signs of breast cancer as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call the Thermography Center of Fairfax to schedule a breast exam today at 703-948-7248. That's 703-943-7248. For more information, visit www.thermographyscan.net. That's thermographyscan.net for the Thermography Center of Fairfax. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup.